Yeah, uh, Brett, that's a million dollar question. And I, you know, I knew that he was going to average um, 20 points and 10 rebounds this year. I just, I saw it coming. No, to be honest with you, you know, expectation was to grow as a sophomore. You know, I really thought he could be a guy that could, you know, probably jump from five points a game to possibly, you know, 12 and, and give us somewhere around six, seven rebounds a game. You know, I know I've said it before, he showed two games where, I thought he was really tremendous, and that was uh, at Wake last year and at Notre Dame. Um, but you know he's done a he's done a ter terrific job for us uh, this year, and he's put a lot of work in. And if it, if anybody that I've ever coached, he's a guy that plays to his strengths. Um, he knows who he is. Um, doesn't do anything outside of the box, and you know he's a elite guy in transition and tremendous offensive rebounder and. He's playing really, really great basketball for us. So I, I thought 12 and possibly six, and I'm excited that he's given us what he's given us. And and when did you make the decision to make him the primary ball handler and what went into that decision? Well, I just think we, you know, uh, we, we're, we were searching because obviously we had dropped so many games in a row. And as a coach, you look for different things and a different spark. And, you know, we put the ball in his hand and, um, he was making plays uh, early in the year. He wasn't making plays for others. He was scoring for himself. And, you know, we talked about him. He and I sit down and watch film. We communicated with him. The coaches worked with him. And he became a willing passer. That being said, you know, we don't like to put him at the point guard position the entire game. We move him around. He's been playing point for us all year long. He just has not started the game in that way. And, you know, the last few games we've started him at that position. Thanks. Thank you, Brett. We'll go to David Thompson. Go ahead, David. Hey, Coach. Good morning. Good morning, David. Every time I see David Thompson, man, no disrespect to you, I think it's the great David Thompson. But I'm not, hey, not 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 calling you great. I just, hey, when you talk no, about I get David it. Thompson around NC State, you know, you know how that is. I get it. I'm a constant silver medal. I, I understand in my own name. It's fine. Um, I was curious, just looking forward to the Duke game, if you had a chance to watch any of the film from, from Duke Miami and, uh, you know, if you saw something that you can apply uh, to your own game plan against Duke on Saturday. Now, you know, David, you, you have to know this. There's not one coach I know that's going to skip a game and um, talk about another game on Saturday. I didn't watch it. Um, you know, I've, obviously my focus has been, you know, our last game that we played and then against Clemson, and then obviously looking at Louisville. So I don't have an answer for you. Uh, I haven't had a chance to watch it. Um, I just – I saw um, where Miami beat them, but I couldn't tell you anything about the game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we'll go to James Henderson. Go ahead, James. Yeah, Kevin, um, what can you take from your first matchup from Louisville going into this one this week? You know, I always think, um, James, that they, they will be different. and. You know, it was a good game. It was a game of runs in that game, which we seem to be a part of a, a lot this year. Um, you know, I thought we, you know, we got in foul trouble early. I remember Cam Hayes and both Jericho Hellams having to go to the bench and had to play both of those guys with two fouls in the first half. And, you know, we went into to break, I want to say down 14, but our as our team has done so much this year, um, with what we are being as young as we are, we fight. So we fought back and we had our opportunities and man, they, they hit two big shots at the end. Uh, Noah Ross hit one. Um, and then, um, they hit another one at the end, which was kind of heartbreaking for us, but it's a good game. I, I think both teams showed a lot of fight. Uh, will it be the same game? I don't know that. Uh, but I will say our guys have completely fought and I could say that about every game that we've been in. Yeah. And, and just to follow up, I know you've played small some this year. Uh, did you consider that any late down a stretch against Clemson? And, and is that something you may look at to get a little more production from the five spot? Yeah, it's it's tough, uh, James, because you, you know, you got Sebron who's really lately been your point guard. Now you have to really, the only other position that he can play because of size becomes the, the four spot. And so it makes it a little bit tough. Um, you know, if Ernest Ross was a year later, you got him and Jericho about, you know, another six, seven, six, nine guy. And, you know, if you had a guy like Greg available, it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, we don't have, uh, 
if you move Jericho to a five, we really don't have another small, I mean, a power forward kind of in the program without kind of shifting everybody. So that makes it a little bit tougher. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Luke DeCock, go ahead. Hey, Kevin. I, when you look at, at ACC play, you guys have had games where your offense played really well and lost. You've had games where you didn't shoot the ball well. It doesn't feel like there's kind of a common thread, like one thing you can point to and say, this is this is what we have to fix. Is that frustrating for you as a coach, or do you take solace kind of in the fight that you talked about that kind of no matter what is going on, your guys are, are trying? How do you kind of balance that? Well, we're taking – we're not taking more victories, but we're – taking many wins. And what I mean by that is small wins in small categories. Um, <clears throat> I think it's changed from game to game. You know, initially, I think it was a more of an offensive thing. Now we're pretty much getting a good rhythm offensively. We're doing some stuff. And then we had a stretch where I thought defensively we wasn't very good. And then we go up to Virginia Tech, as you said, and, and we play well on the defensive end. You know, when you have so many young and inexperienced guys, I think it it changes from game to game, and we want to get consistent on both ends of the floor. Um, our guys, you know, a common thread, Luke, that, that gets me, you know, excited about our team and what we look like is that we're fighting and competing every game. You can't can't say that about a lot of teams that are struggling right now, but at the end of the day, we do have a lot of fight, and we're in every game to win. Um, we just we we finished the Virginia Tech game, and we got completely just hurt inside at the Clemson game. And so each game presents a different problem um, that is a little frustrating, but I do think we're improving in a lot of areas where we're trying to get better at. And, you know, one of them defensively, one of them's offensively, one of them, you know, trying to, it's hard. And, and I never have been in this position before when you have young bigs, man, it's so tough because so much pressure is on your guards just to perform from the outside. And, and that's what we're going through right now. So on every night, our guards have to be really, really good players to put us in a position to win. And that's both offensively and defensively. Uh, we'll go back to Brett Friedlander. Go ahead, yeah. Brett. Kevin, you just mentioned Greg Gant. Um, if my eyes did not deceive me, he warmed up before the game Saturday. How how close is he to being ready to come back and you know, he's close. Um, you know, we're still talking back and forth with uh, doctors, um, our trainers, and also Greg. And, you know, all three of them have to be on the same page. Um, close, you know, when I say close, it could be, I don't think it'll be any sooner than two or three weeks, but there's a possibility that it just won't happen the entire year. And so we want to make sure that all three are comfortable. Um, he's incredibly out of shape but he has went through a few workouts. We throw him into some workouts and we want him to warm up. So those days that we play games that he's not just sitting around, not doing anything. Uh, David Teal, go ahead. Kevin, you mentioned having young bigs. Virginia Tech's kind of just the opposite, very experienced up front, yet you go in there and I know Smith had a huge sh shooting game from beyond the arc, but what were you guys able to do there in, in Castle that night? Yeah, David, we, we, our post defense started with our guards. And I think in order for us to, the reason why we were successful is because our guards did a great job of helping our young bigs, protecting them a little bit. We threw a couple of traps in there, which we hadn't done all year long. Um, but we also, you know, they also pressured the basketball and, you know, make some of the entry passes a little bit tough. Um, we're, you know, one thing we're talking about, David, is because our bigs are young and inexperienced on both ends of the floor, our guards have to now protect us. We got to be in great help side. We got to work a little harder um, to keep the ball from going inside. And I think that was one of the keys that helped us win the game against Virginia Tech on the road. Kevin, that's all the questions that we have for you today. Thanks for the time. Good luck this week. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your day. All right. See you next week.